Hello and welcome back to Clownfish TV. It is me, Geeky Sparkles, and today it's just me because Neon is busy as he usually is on Saturdays and Sundays. So today I'm going to be doing most of the videos with you and we're going to talk about our first video is a Disney video because it's our daily dose of Dismal Disney. We're talking about how expensive Disney has become in the theme parks, but why Disney you know, benefits from keeping the prices high and how a lot of people feel that you need like a class to be able to plan a trip. I don't necessarily think that's true. I'll give you a few tips that worked for us when we talk about this, but um, we're gonna talk about how it's it's pricing people out and it seems so complicated that people are you know, intimidated by the experience and it's actually pushing people away. So before we get into it any further, please like and subscribe. If you do, I'll give you a woohoo, woohoo. And we're gonna talk about this. So CNN Business had this article it's never been more expensive to be a Disney fan. And it's true. The prices keep going up and up. Every time you turn around, you know, some souvenir has been raised in cost. Food keeps getting jacked up in cost. Like the theme park resort mugs, like the resort hotel mugs get raised in cost. It's, it, they nickel and dime you. Like they get you in the door. And even if you get a deal, you think, okay, I'm getting a deal until you get in the door. And then it's like, you know, you have to keep paying more and more. And where it used to be inclusive, like you'd go to the park, and you'd get your, your um, Fast Pass Plus and you could go ride the rides, you could just plan them out ahead. And it used to be like that. Well, now it's not only, you don't have to pay the Genie Plus now if you wanna get in things or Lightning Lane Access. So you get the, you know, quick in the line, $20 here, $25 there kind of thing. Just gone are the days where you used to be able to go to the parks and just do what you wanna do and have fun. Like you have to have everything scheduled. You have to know that you're gonna, when you're gonna do what. Um, a lot of times you get the Genie Plus app, you know, you have to be at least somewhat flexible because you, you're gonna to wanna to schedule what you can get. But it's not like it used to be. It was easier when you had the Fast Pass Plus because you could plan out your day better. And now they've had it, you have to plan more. And sometimes you don't find out to the last minute what you can and can't get. You can't pivot as easily as you could have a few years ago. And all this comes with the price hike. You're already paying how much for a ticket? Well, don't, you know, don't worry. We're going to charge you an extra $30 a day for Genie Plus on top of it. So it, it doesn't make any sense. Just roll it in at that point. And people are always like, well, Universal has their, you know, Express Pass and stuff. The difference is, is Universal is very expensive. I'm not going to lie and say it's not. It is pricey. But because it's so expensive, most people don't use it. So if you spend the money to use it, you'll actually be able to use it. I'm seeing pictures of like the Lightning Lane access, G Plus Lane access for attractions, and it's longer than the, the, the regular standby line. And the thing that sucks for the standby line was when, when Fast Pass was there, they might let 30 people in for every 10 people in the standby line. Now the Genie Plus is there, they're letting like 50, 60 people in for every five people in the standby line. I don't know the exact numbers, but I know it's a lot more ridiculous now because they're trying to make you pay for it, but everybody's paying for it now. So it's really not giving you much of a benefit. So this article is talking about how ridiculous it's getting. Um, this person with her husband and two children went to Disney World and they said they lost all concept of money and time. This kind of ties into the reports about people getting into credit card debt and severe debt just to go to the parks. It has gotten more expensive. It's crazy, said the New York-based content creator. I feel like when you go to Disney, it's almost like planning a wedding. Yeah. You're like, eh, I'm already in it. What's 20 or 30 more bucks? Before you know it, you're way out of your, it's way out of your control and you're in this Disney mindset. We're talking about the prices have gone up across Disneyverse. Not only have theme parks visits gotten more expensive, so have Disney cruise vacations, souvenirs, streaming services, timeshare programs. If it has Disney on it, it's more expensive. You're talking about different nudges and different, different things. Disney's been doing this for years. This isn't a new thing. They do not keep up with inflation. They are way past what the inflation rate is. They're getting ridiculous. And I think that's causing people to rethink a trip. There are ways you can go. I do think if you really want to go, everybody should get to go at least once if they want to go. If they want to go is the caveat. A lot of people don't even want to go. But I would like to see people get to go at least once if that's what they want to do. And you can do it. You might, you have to save, always figure out they're going to keep raising prices. So whatever you budget in your mind, add to it because guaranteed you're going to need it. Flights, you know, you can't control things like flights or other price of gas or other things like that outside. You have to keep that in mind as well. But I think if you plan ahead and you do different things, anybody could go. It just might take you a while to get the money to go. People can't even afford to buy medicines. People are cutting down on things because food prices have gotten so high. Utilities have gotten so high. Disney theme parks isn't high on people's priority list, even though they'd like to do it. 
But they're talking here about, yeah, how one day ticket to Disney World during peak holiday season has risen 47% since 2019. We're not talking like 2009, 1999, 2019, 47% 20, in, in like five years, not even that, because this has been holiday season. So four years, a little couple months, they've almost doubled the cost of some tickets in that time frame. People were all excited because one person got in on, to Disney World on the $10 ticket or whatever from like the 70s. And I had to laugh because once upon a time, true story, they didn't have expiration dates on tickets so if you bought tickets you could use them and people can still probably use them now so what would happen would be like my mom and dad used to do this all the time the more days you went the cheaper tickets cheaper per day it was so like if it was like you know we'll use round numbers it was a hundred bucks a day each day dropped down like so much money so the end it's just a few dollars extra to add extra days so people would buy like 10 day ticket maybe use five and then they'd have five days for the next time you know what i mean they weren't, they had no expiration dates. So somebody using a ticket from then isn't such a big deal as people think it is because they, they had lots of tickets that, that didn't have those dates on it. But now you can't do that. Everything expires. You want a park hop, used to be free, now you have to pay for it. You know, there's different things that they just keep finding ways to sneak in fees. They said, here's some dizzy math for a family of four. Two days in Disneyland and California Adventure Parks, the first weekend of March, not a peak period, will cost you. This is, this is only... Two days, okay? $1,310 for admission tickets and parking. GD Plus will probably add another $240 to the total. So that's nearly $1,600 before any souvenirs, food, places to stay, etc. That's just getting in the door. And then if you get in the door and you don't know what you're doing, you could spend all that money and not be able to ride much of anything because you don't know where to go or what to do. Which brings me to the next point. This is a Washington Post article. They said Disney trips are so complicated now that you need a class to plan one. And they're offering classes and packages to help you plan your trip. Now, don't panic yet. There are travel agents out there. Disney approved travel agents will do a lot of this stuff for you. For It's no cost to you. You pay for your trip. They get a commission. It's no cost to you. So check Disney travel agents um, that are authorized ones. You can probably get a lot of help from them. Other websites out there have a lot of help on it. They're talking here about you can go to travel agents, YouTubers, influencers, bloggers, friends with experience, touring plans. There's a bunch of different places you can go that you can find help to, you know, figure this out. But even then, it's very, very tricky because it used to be you booked your trip, you booked what parks you're going to, or you knew where you were going to go. You booked your reservations if you wanted to eat someplace. And then you planned out what you wanted to do when you got to the park. And if you had Fast Pass Plus, you know, everybody had that, you could plan them ahead. Now it's a little more complicated because you you have to, well, they got rid of the theme park reservations, thank God, unless you're a pass holder. Basically, when you buy your ticket that for that park, you know you're going in that day. But you still have to know what park you're going into. They allowed park hopping again. So I recommend, if you want to keep the cost down, don't park hop. But if you want to, you know, get a lot out of it, pay the park hopper because you can start out in one theme park that may be not so busy in the morning and go to another one that maybe is not so busy in the evening. I know that's... You know, it's hard to find it not so busy, but like if it gets too busy, you can just go someplace else where if you're like on a single day ticket, you, you're you stuck all day. You could go back to your hotel and come back in. A lot of people do. And you might be able to get some, you know, off times there, but I recommend it. It's more expensive, but I think it's worth it. Um, they're talking about VIP tour guides. Yes, they they are very expensive. Four hundred fifty nine hundred dollars an hour plus park admissions. They had independent tour guides at Disney's well, now banning from the parks. Um, it's just very, very complicated. That being said, there are plenty of websites and stuff out there. You don't have to pay for a course. You might be able to find free ones there. Like I said, there's YouTubers, travel agents, definitely travel agents are a big help. If you, if you, you find a Disney travel agent that's approved, definitely use them. They can help you considerably. Some things I do that, that we, we did in the past is find out like, what are the things you know, you want to ride the most. Okay. And then if there's things you really, really want to do. And they have the individual lightning lane access for it. It sucks, but you might want to pay for that. Or go there first thing. At, at, when, you, when, the, when the ropes drop, head there first. But a lot of people are going to head there first too. But you might get at least your big one in. And then if you can get Genie Pluses for other things, you can get on those. What we do at Magic Kingdom, and we, we don't really care about the mine train because 
Neon calls it the mind pain because his legs are too long. And, and it was just not, uh, we don't have to do that one. We're okay if we miss it. So we skip that. But a lot of people head there first. What we usually do is if it's one of us really, really wants to ride like a uh, like Space Mountain or something and we can't get a Genie Plus Pass for it, we'll do that first. But normally we go to like Peter Pan first and we hit that and then um, we'll just work our way around that way. Like you know, Peter Pan, we'll do sometimes we'll do Small World, anything in that area. And then we'll hop down to the Haunted Mansion and then we'll go over and go well, now it doesn't matter because Splash Mountain and Thunder Mountain um I think Thunder Mountain's down too. Splash Mountain is for sure. But we'd go to Thunder Mountain and Splash Mountain. And then we'd, we'd hit like Pirates and I think over in that way. And then we go over to um, Tomorrowland and hit those things. But again, we try to get some Genie Pluses, Fast Pass Pluses at the time in among those things. But if you want to go on to an attraction that you really want to do, uh, go there first. If it's, a really, if it's a really busy one, I'd hit that one first. Now over in um in like Hollywood Studios... If you want to do the Star Wars stuff, obviously go do that first. We were able to get on to Rise of the Resistance and then the my son and my sister went on to the, the Smuggler's Run attraction. Um, we would have got through faster, but the Rise of the Resistance went down. Shocker, I know. Never happens. Um, but if you don't want to, if you don't care about Star Wars, you're honestly better to go to Toy Story Land and hit like the Slinky Dog Dash and all that stuff first. Um, but if you want Star Wars, I go in the morning or go in the evening. A lot of times people go to those attractions towards the end of the day. And usually if you're in line, like if you're getting in line with the last 45 minutes out or whatever of the day, whoever's in line will let you through. I don't know if that's still the case. It used to be the case. We used to use it on um, Flight of Passage and Pandora all the time. You, you could go at the very end of the day, last hour, 45 minutes, get in line. And usually you get pushed through because after a certain time, they would cut off letting people in for lightning lanes or whatever, fast pass pluses or whatever. And then you get through. But I don't know if that's still the same case as it used to be. But that's what we did that several times on attractions. If we couldn't get there first, we go there at the end. Um, but you run the risk of not getting to ride at all. And a lot of times people will stand in line for a long, long time and then the ride will go down anyway and then you don't get to rides and then there's nothing you can do. But it is, it is a complete logistical nightmare. My, my son refers to it as a lesson in logistics because you have to know what you're doing. You have to be quick and you have to be, um, very flexible because things change. Like it used to be, I want to go here, here, and here. And you can have these markers. Like I know I, I have a restaurant reservation at this time, but since you can't, go out too far as far as your genie your genie plus is like you used to with fast pass pluses you have to be flexible to know where you're going to head and where you can get into it's very confusing for a lot of people and if you don't know what you're doing you could end up not getting to ride much of anything because the lines are too long because now with genie plus you let more people in than they should so it's a completely logistic completely just like a nightmare which is turning people off but the reason they're doing it the reason they're nickel and diming you the reason they're doing genie plus is because of this they said that uh, their theme parks, theme park business boosted them. So they said the earnings in the last quarter uh, were boosted by cost cuts and growing revenue from its theme parks. Theme parks save Disney so many times. So if they are losing at other places like the box office, they're going to nickel and dime the theme parks. So they want to get you anywhere they can get you. Um, like I said, Bob Iger is the one who made you pay for parking at the hotels. He walked that back. But for years, you had not only were you paying for this, like several hundred dollars a night hotel, you had to pay for parking too. It's just ridiculous the amount of, of you know, hoops they make you jump through and how much it costs. But for a lot of people, it's intimidating. Again, like I said, if you really want to go and you have kids especially, I recommend going at least once. But keep in mind that it's very expensive, plan for way more than you expect. Because if you don't use it all, you know, worst case scenario, you can just put it back in the bank or use it for something else, you know. Plan way more than you think for what money. And then also understand like everything you could read up on the trip ahead of time. Uh, you know, different people have different plans of how to do the parks or whatever, or, um, you know, different tips and tricks and helpful hints. Look up all that stuff before you go. If you could find, you know, good YouTuber sites or websites that have lots of, lots of information for you, um, maybe see, watch food reviews first to see if like, this is something I want to spend money on or, you know, know what you're get, getting at the restaurant. Like you can find out where to eat at this restaurant. Here's pictures and descriptions of the food. You know, you can save yourself a lot of money if your kid won't eat it. It's an awful lot of money to throw away for like, you know, something they won't eat. Food at Disney, it's funny, we always joke like, you're at your, your, your hometown and you're like, I'm not paying five bucks for a cupcake. And in Disney, you're like, that's a bargain. 
Or, you know, you would never go to a restaurant and spend some of the money that they spend at these restaurants. And, you know, or if you did, it'd be like once in, a, you know, once in every year or something here, it's like every day. And you're just like Disney money and real world money are two different things. And it's really, really easy to get caught up into that. And I don't want to see people get themselves into trouble. So just keep this all in mind when you go. But yeah, Disney trips are expensive and they're getting more and more expensive. So if you wanna you keep that in mind, I don't know what else to tell you. They're gonna keep milking it, especially if they're putting $60 billion into the parks around the world. Even if they don't do, they do jack shit and give you a, a, a Zootopia, you know, tree of life, new tree of life show and they reskin something. They're gonna want top dollar and want you to pay for it. Cause it's not gonna come out of their pockets. They're putting that money aside, but you're gonna be paying for it. So expect, I fully expect more price increases. It's gonna to get to the place where people just can't go. But some people are so diehard, even if it bankrupts their family, they'll go anyway. Anyway, there you are. Please like and subscribe, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.